because the Lord is with you. And all of us are with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel in the tradition of Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If your sister or brother should commit some wrong against you, go and point out the error, but keep it between the two of you. If he or she listens to you, you have won them back. If not, try again, but take two or others with you, so that every case may stand on the word of two or three witnesses. If your sister or brother refuses to listen to them, refer the matter to the church. If she or he ignores the church, then treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. I assure you, Whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two of you join in agreement to pray for anything, whatever on earth, it will be granted to you by God in heaven. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. And this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Praise, Praise, Praise you, Lord. Jesus. By the words of the gospel, may our sin be blotted out. Amen. 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 Most of us, in fact, all of us in the room right now, I know came from other places. And when we went to church, the pastor, the priest, the lector, would climb by the stairs to get up into the pulpit. I remember this one place in Brooklyn when I taught school, we had a confirmation, and the, the pulpit was literally hanging over the congregation. And by the time the bishop got up there, he just went, <laughs> so you know, you all sit. And it's important that we are on eye level when we talk to each other. Okay? When uh, the, the preacher is not looking down on you and going like this, it's important that we talk to each other. There's a story which I heard a long time ago, maybe you know it already, but it is a holiday weekend, so let's divert a little bit. There's this guy who decides he's been away from church for years, and he wants to join a congregation. So he goes down the street, and the first church he comes to is a Roman Catholic church. Goes up to the rectory, knocks on the door, and asks the pastor, the priest comes out, they talk, and he says, he says, Father, I'd like to join your church. What do I have to do? Well, the priest said, the first thing we do is give you a box of envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we sit down and talk. Right? The priest says, can I ask you a question, young man? Sure, Father. He says, where was Jesus born? In Scranton. <laughs> yeah. I think you really better think about this a little bit more. Goes a little bit further and he sees a Baptist church and he goes in and the minister says, can I help you? He said, yes, Reverend, I'd like to join your church. What do I have to do? Very simple, he said, follow the golden rule and you'll be more than welcome to said, Okay, Reverend, let me ask you a question. Where was Jesus born? He, the, 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 man, the, the priest asks, God, where the Jews go? And he says, Harrisburg. He looks at him and he says, no, not really. Last choice, there's a Unitarian church down the block. And he goes and he sees the woman who did the woman minister. And he says, Madam, what do I have to do to join your church? Just come and with open arms and welcome you. And he says to her, let me ask you a question. Where was Jesus born? She says, in Bethlehem. I knew it was someplace in Pennsylvania. 
Anyway, now we listen to the readings today, and they're very true to the time. And without getting political, there's a lot of political in, in, innuendos that are in this, especially the first reading. But the theme of the readings is very simply that God loves us. Do we believe that? Do we believe that God loves us? We're told that we're made in the image and likeness of God. And we're told further in first reading the first epistle of John is that God loved us before we loved God. And that manner of love, probably about 15 years ago or so, it was much more involved than today, and there were posters made, and there were postage stamps with the word love on them. In fact, in the house, I've got a, a picture of the love stamp on the wall. It was very big at the time. But what does love mean? As um, the movie um, Love Story. Love never has to mean, never means you have to say you're sorry. Sometimes we have to say you're sorry. Sometimes we have to truly, from the depths of our heart, feel compassion for the other person. Especially someone that we might have injured, maybe unwillingly. But the trouble is people injure each other with a full heart and desire to hurt each other. And that's not the manner of Jesus. Jesus refused nobody, as we well know. Right? No matter who you were, you were welcome. And yet, certain people want to keep certain people out of church. Certain people want to follow that only there are certain groups of people that are welcome. That's not being Christian. That's not letting God into who we are. In the, the gospel that we just heard from Matthew, the very last line is very important. Where two or three are gathered, I am in their midst. I am with them. That's why, for example, um, I think I'm right on this. Father Vinny will back me up or not. But a priest is not allowed to say mass with nobody there. Right? It has to be a communal celebration. There was uh, at Easter time, and uh, yeah, during Easter, I remember one of the periodicals I get. There was a picture of a priest in the parking lot of the church in vestments giving communion to cause was that the drive up communion? Or the okay. We were nourished by the bread of life, okay? But we also are nourished, why? Because we gather together. And one of the things that we're doing, which Paul and I have spoken about, is that whenever we get back to normal, we're going to have a tremendous celebration. A meal like we haven't shared before. And this will be our gift to you. We have to celebrate. We have to acknowledge that God lives with us in a very special way. And we just can't say that we are Christian. We have to live it. We have to allow God to shine through us. And there's that prayer that we attribute to Francis, which probably didn't come from Francis. Make me an instrument of your And in order to give that peace, we have to have it within us. 
let God in. Let the evil. Think about it. Pray about it. And pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.